Good morning. Welcome to St. David's Episcopal Church. I'm Jocelyn Hughes, the rector, and it's so great to be worshiping together on this first Sunday of Advent. You can download the bulletin for our service today from our website. The link is in the chat. And as always, the words to the prayers and the hymns will be on your screen. So please pray and sing along from home as you feel comfortable doing. Please join us for coffee hour on Zoom immediately after the service. We will be continuing our parish-wide book study on An Altar in the World. You don't have to have read the book to participate. Selections of our music from our service today are available for download from stdavidsmusic.bandcamp.com. All proceeds will support our music program. Sunday School is now available before each service every week, live on Zoom from 10 to 10.25 a.m. All children in pre-K through fifth grades are welcome to participate. Our outreach ministries at St. David's continue, and we're so grateful for your prayers and your support through your pledges. Thank you all for being here today. Now let us begin with the lighting of the Advent wreath with the Kleinfelter kids. Today we light the first candle of the Advent wreath. Each candle has a meaning. The first candle is hope. The candle is lit. Psalm 33, 20 says, We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Eternal God, as we await the coming of our Savior, give the courage to hope. Give grace to see your plans of redemption for our lives, for this community, and for the world. Through Jesus Christ, the source of our redemption and hope. Amen. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. Come. Um. 
let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. Let us say together Psalm 80, verses 1 through 7 and 16 through 18. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When did you, when you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our inquire and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There was no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. 
We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you have for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus for in every way which you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you waited for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. An angel went from God to a
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus said, in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth and the ends of the heavens, from the fig tree, from the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as the branches become tender and put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home, he puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at the cock crow or at dawn, or else he will find you asleep. When he comes suddenly, and what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Dear friends in Christ, I speak to you today in the name of God who is our Creator, our Redeemer, and our eternal Sustainer. Amen. Happy New Year, everyone. No, I'm not a month off, although time is a slippery thing right now. Today is the first day of our new year in the church, the first Sunday of Advent. And maybe it's appropriate for us to feel a little discombobulated on this day, to have our sense of time be a little confused. Advent is a strange season. For four weeks before Christmas, we prepare we anticipate, we reflect, and we expect. But what? In a word, Jesus. Jesus who was, and is, and is to come. That is Jesus back then, Jesus now, and Jesus later on, but when exactly we're not sure. All three times, all at once. How can this be? Well, yes, it can't be, and yet it is. So we use these four weeks to prepare for and anticipate the arrival of baby Jesus, our God incarnate. The events we remember happened 2,000 years ago. Jesus was born as we all are, Although he was born in a barn, surrounded by animals and the lowliness, meaning dirt, that that entails. So we now prepare to celebrate Jesus's birthday, usually by giving presents to one another. 
And yet, we are also preparing and anticipating when Jesus will come again, as we say in the creeds. When he returns, there will be judgment and glory and an end to the suffering in the world, which is why some people hope it will happen within their lifetimes. We prepare for this by strengthening our relationships with God, by studying scripture, by examining our own lives, because we don't know when this second coming will happen. Advent is also a time to reflect both backwards and forwards, to reflect on what the world was like before Jesus entered it, what it means that God loves this world so much, loves us so much, that God decided to come and be with us to show us how to live and what is truly important. And then we reflect on what all of this means for ourselves looking forward. How will we live differently in light of this incredible gift? How will our thoughts, feelings, actions be different because of Jesus, because of the ministry he has called us to do? How can we let God's love so transform us Let Jesus into our hearts to make us more and more of who God has called us to be. And finally, we have great hope-filled expectations. Our Jewish siblings expected, waited for this long-promised Messiah. And Jesus came. And now we expect he will come again, and we wait for that day. So we prepare, anticipate, reflect, and expect, looking back in time and forward in the future. And we do all of this now, in the present moment, because Jesus is here too. If this seems strange and hard to contemplate, you're right, it is. Luckily, we have four whole weeks to do this. And in this year, when so much is ruined, when much is off kilter and wrong, when fear and anxiety are palpable, we are invited by God to remember that all of this was and is and is to come. God is there through it all and with us through it all. Advent happened before the pandemic, is happening during it, and will happen again when this is finally over. This Advent, like so much else in 2020, will be different. Doing Advent on a screen is new and different for me, for sure. But the meaning of it and the invitation to us is the same as always. Use this time to prepare, anticipate, reflect, and expect that God is coming to us, that God is here now that God wants to know and be known by each of us, and that this is the time, this is the moment for us to honor that first coming as we look toward the second coming with hope. We need that hope so much right now. God offers it to us. Hope for love, hope for peace, hope for justice, hope for health, hope for joy. Use this time to sink into that hope, to allow yourself time and space to learn about it, experience it, embrace it. 
This is what we need to carry into the new year. And God has given it to us in Jesus, who was and who is and who is to come. Amen. Now let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in that last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and hope you provide to us in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the Spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The prayers of the people. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For Michael, our presiding bishop. For Susan, our bishop. And for Jocelyn, our priest. Wayne and Jim, our associate priests. For this gathering and for all ministers and people. In the Anglican communion, 
We pray for the Lusitanian church in our diocese for the clergy and people of Christ the King Alpine. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well being of all people. Let us pray for healing from the pandemic of racial injustice. Guide our civil discourse, O oh God. Alert us to social evils and show our nation how to end patterns of racism. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask you prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for our own needs and those of others. Let us pray for an end to the pandemic of the coronavirus. Comfort those afflicted with COVID-19 and uphold our medical workers. Give us a sense of responsibility for one another and provide the world a vaccine. I ask your prayers for those on our parish prayer list. We rejoice with those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, May with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. a voice in the wilderness crying, a call from the waves untried. Prepare in the desert a highway, a highway for a God. The valley shall be exalted, the lofty hills brought low. Make straight all the crooked places where the Lord Zion, that one has good tidings, get me up from the heights and see, I'll claim to a desolate people, the coming of their king, like flowers of the field they perish, like grass our works decay, the power and the form of nation shall pass like the dream. endureth. The arm of the Lord is strong. 
Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.